innocent civilians first, they have been able to make a positive contribution to resolving conflict and war. Our own country, South Africa, is a case in point. Apartheid South Africa was on the agenda of the UN Security Council for a considerable period of time. <clears throat> but through eventual collective global action, including through Security Council sanctions, pressure was brought to bear on the apartheid regime, which contributed to the birth of democracy in South Africa. The role of the UN and the international community in the fight against apartheid is important to recall as we celebrate 25 years of democracy this year. Ladies and gentlemen, the world today is unfortunately characterized by a rise in populism and nationalism, increasing geopolitical divisions and the pursuit of narrow interests. This has made it more difficult to respond to transnational challenges. States are interdependent, and even the most powerful countries cannot achieve security, nor maintain prosperity, and ensure sustainable development for their people by acting unilaterally or in isolation. South Africa thus continues to believe that multilateralism will continue to be a key aspect of international relations, and that collective action is required to mitigate the geopolitical interests that threaten global sustainable development good governance and security. A multilateral system based on international law that fosters greater interdependence and mutual cooperation is the only way in which we can successfully address these difficulties. <coughs> My friends, <clears throat> it is for this reason that we have remained committed to the United Nations and its ideals and why we chose to put our name forward to be elected to the UN Security Council. We are grateful for the confidence that the international community has shown in our candidature for the Security Council. We are proud to say we were endorsed by our sub-region, sub, sub the Southern African Development Community, or SADC, as well as our continental body, the African Union, before being overwhelmingly elected by the UN General Assembly to serve as an elected member the Security Council. And in this, we do not forget our friends from the G77 plus China and our friends from the non-aligned movement who also supported us. As we commence our term on the Security Council, we are cognizant that elected members of the Council face a distinct disadvantage. This is because we join an organ of the United Nations which comprises five permanent members that have been on the council for over 70 years and who have the right to a veto. Against this background, in November 2018, South Africa and Sweden hosted an unprecedented meeting of elected members of the council in Pretoria to discuss mutual cooperation and better coordination. This meeting recognized that in the face of growing divisions, amongst the five permanent members. The elected non-permanent members have a crucial role to play to ensure that the council is able to fulfill its mandate. Our term on the Security Council also presents an opportunity for South Africa to continue to advocate for the improvement of the working methods and the comprehensive reform of the United Nations, including the reform and expansion of the Security Council. Ladies and gentlemen, next week will mark two months since we assumed our seat at the Security Council. In this brief time, the Security Council has met almost daily to address a myriad of issues that have been deemed threats to international peace and security. These include the situations in Somalia, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the Central African Republic, situation in Yemen, Syria, and Palestine. As a member of the Council, South Africa participated in all these deliberations, advancing the values of our Constitution and our foreign policy imperatives. 
I want to touch on two issues that have dominated discussions in the Council since we took up our seat. Firstly, the matter of the DRC was one of the first and most important issues considered by South Africa on the Council during January 2019, following the holding of elections on 30 December 2018. South Africa was among those Council members that resisted any attempt by some members of the Security Council to prejudge the outcome of the election. South Africa supported the completion of the internal processes and the right to self-determination of the people of the DRC. We also welcomed the peaceful outcome and the conduct of the elections, given the challenges that the people of the DRC faced. Secondly, regarding the recent events in Venezuela, South Africa has maintained its principled position of calling on some countries and regional groups not to interfere in the internal processes of a sovereign state or to be used as a tool for unconstitutional changes of government. South Africa emphasized the need for political dialogue and to address the dire humanitarian situation on the ground in Venezuela. South Africa's approach to Venezuela was premised on support for inclusive political dialogue to resolve the political crisis in the country and to support any legitimate efforts to provide humanitarian support to alleviate the hardships experienced by the people of Venezuela. I want to pause there for a moment and refer to the fact that within the United Nations, we have organizations that distribute humanitarian aid and they do so effectively and efficiently. The Red Cross is just one of those. And so we must question the role played by certain countries in attempting to provide aid to Venezuela via the back door, as it were, in order to promote a particular individual in Venezuela. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to conclude by reiterating that we look forward to working with all members of the Security Council in unity and solidarity in achieving global peace and security and ultimately a better life for all of humanity. We are ready to be part of those committed to shaping a better, more peaceful and prosperous world through multilateral cooperation that is based on international law. Thank you very much for this opportunity.